the 1957 Buick Facts book, these two statements appear on pages 38 and 39. Altogether, the 1957 century is again ready to outstyle, outride, and outhustle cars costing a good deal more, as well as any car of comparable cost. It practically challenges other makes to match its outstanding characteristics, point by point and feature by feature. All right, let's accept that challenge. Let's do some point by point and feature by feature comparing and see if we can't prove which of these two competing cars, the DeSoto Fire Dome and the Buick Century, is really the outstanding value in 1957. Now, we all know the Century has a reputation for speed and performance, and it does have a bigger engine than other cars in its class. Century has 300 horsepower and 364 cubic inches displacement compared to Fire Dome's 270 horsepower and 341 cubic inches. But how important is that to all-around performance at common, ordinary speeds? Don't forget, the design of the Fire Dome engine with its larger valves for better breathing plays a big part in superior performance. And what's more, the transmission plays a big part in performance too. And performance tests prove that a Fire Dome with torque flight delivers a faster getaway than a Buick with Dynaflow. After all, at breakaway, torque flight multiplies engine power six and six-tenths times. Dynaflow multiplies engine power only three and five-tenths times. This more than makes up for Fire Dome's slightly lower horsepower and torque. Now, we've got some certified test pictures coming up that may surprise you, because they prove that the new Fire Dome is a much better performer than you may have thought. Incidentally, in all of the following tests, both cars were tuned to factory specifications. Both cars were driven by professional test drivers. They had the same equipment, automatic transmission, power steering, power brakes. Now, let's check that century performance. The zero to 60 miles an hour acceleration test is our first performance comparison. The cars are waiting for the flag to drop with engines idling, transmissions in drive range. And there they go. And DeSoto is ahead right from the start. At about 30, DeSoto has a car length lead. At 60, DeSoto is ahead by three car lengths. So from now on, don't let anybody try to tell you that DeSoto doesn't have better breakaway than Century right up to 60. Just for the record, the Century does start to close the gap above 60. Now, for practical purposes, what does that zero to 60 test mean to the prospect? The crew has set out 100 foot markers so we can compare the cars in the passing test on a 7% grade. The same driver pilots each car. Let's look at the pictures. Breezing along at a steady 40 mile clip, the two cars stay the same distance behind the truck, which is also doing 40. In each case, the instant the front bumper lines up with those two road signs, the driver tramps down on his accelerator and turns out to pass. The truck maintains its 40 mile an hour pace throughout the run. At the 100 foot mark, the Fire Dome has only a slight edge on the Century. Now, see how much Fire Dome gains over Century in the next 100 feet or so. Nearing the 300 mark, see how much sooner Fire Dome is ready to start turning back into the proper lane. And here's DeSoto safely back in lane, while Century still isn't safely past the truck. Your Fire Dome can climb hills too, as you'll see on this hill climb up a 32% grade. Here they come, DeSoto in the lead right from the takeoff. Halfway up the grade, the Fire Dome's well ahead. And this hill is steeper than you'll find on any state or federal highway. Yes, this 32% grade is a grueling test for the drivetrain of any car. But close to the top, DeSoto's a good three car lengths ahead. DeSoto shows up better coming down the hill, too, in this test for engine braking. This is really a test for transmissions, and it's one that people driving in hilly country will appreciate. Buick can't seem to hold back because Dynaflow just doesn't provide enough engine braking. 
but the DeSoto with torque flight gives you real engine braking. And look at this. Buick has rolled right out of the picture, but DeSoto still has no trouble holding back. And now, let's look at the service brakes. Brake lining, you know, is what really stops a car. And that's true whether you have manual brakes, hydraulic brakes, air brakes, or any other kind of brakes. Okay, then, get this. The fire dome has 251 square inches of brake lining. The Century has 192 square inches, almost 25% less. DeSoto's extra 59 square inches is the same as having two extra shoes the size of Century's. Think it over. The Century is as heavy as the fire dome, but by DeSoto's standards, it doesn't have the stopping safety a heavy car should have and any performance-minded prospect should know this before he buys a Century. And that's not all. Only DeSoto's brakes are so designed and constructed that they produce total contact between shoe and drum on every stop, no matter how gentle it may be or how severe. But here again, the proof is in the performance. So let's put the brakes to a tough test. Brake fade. Brake fade, you know, occurs after a series of stops, as in mountain driving. Repeated use of the brakes may build up such intense heat that the brakes don't take hold the way they should. They become unpredictable. Now, to fade the brakes for this test, both cars were given five hard stops from 60 miles an hour, one right after the other. This is the picture record of the sixth stop, so we can check brake fade. Here you can see that DeSoto has stopped at about the 100-foot mark. Buick is still rolling. And here is where it stopped. It's well beyond DeSoto because its brakes faded more under the same conditions. We'll see some more tests in a moment. Torsion Air Ride was the subject of the next tests, and this railroad crossing provided a good measurement of bump control. It's an innocent looking bump, one you might run across on any Sunday drive at 30 miles an hour. That's how fast these cars are going as they come up the rise. Look at that Buick front wheel leave the ground. DeSoto, at the same spot, keeps its feet on the ground. Now, Buick is thrown right off the ground there and back, while the DeSoto stays on the road. Remember, they're both going 30 miles an hour. Buick's bumper digs dirt. But look at DeSoto as the Oroflow shocks maintain complete control of spring action. Here, DeSoto is almost level, but now the Buick front end pitches up, the rear end pitches down, and you can imagine how the driver feels. Now the DeSoto is level, comfortable and under control, but Buick, there goes the front end down again as it starts another bounce cycle. We got a dramatic view of the test at night by attaching lights low on the front bumper and high on the rear fender of each car. Then we set up a camera and opened the lens. As the car moved, we got a picture of the light path. This is a picture of the railroad tracks taken from the same position as the night pictures. And these night pictures show the streaks made by the lights as the cars crossed over the railroad tracks, both doing exactly 30 miles an hour. Those shiny lines in the right half of the picture are the railroad tracks. Now remember, in these pictures, the bottom white line shows the action of the front end of each car, and the smoother the line, the smoother the ride. The top white line shows the action of the rear end of the cars, and again, the smoother the line, the better the ride. Okay, notice how much higher that Buick rear end bounces off the track? The DeSoto's light lines are still nearly parallel, indicating a more comfortable ride. A little farther along, notice how drastically the Buick reacted compared to the DeSoto. And notice how Buick's rear end bounced again. Just compare it with DeSoto's. And as the cars passed out of the picture, notice that the Buick was off on a second after bounce, while Torsion Air was keeping DeSoto under control and reasonably comfortable. How can this be? Well, don't forget that DeSoto's Oroflow shock absorbers can control two and a half times more impact than ordinary shock absorbers like Buick's. 
And of course, Buick is still using bouncy coil springs in the rear as well as the front. DeSoto's new suspension uses stable outrigger leaf springs in the rear and firmly anchored torsion bars in front. DeSoto has a lower center of gravity too and better balanced weight distribution. All these things help give the DeSoto driver superior control of his car and a better ride. And DeSoto controls cornering lean too, as we'll see in this test. A horizontal rod is placed across the front end of each car. If the car leans, we'll be able to see it against that fixed horizontal bar in the foreground. Now here they come, doing 75 miles an hour on a curve with a 700 foot radius. Now check the rod on each car with the fixed bar in the foreground. See how Buick's coil springs let it lean more than the DeSoto? Notice the difference up close. The DeSoto takes the curve more nearly flat for better driving control and more riding comfort. Yes, that wonderful torsion air ride. More level up and down, more level side to side. And now, as we shall see, more stable when starting and stopping. Here the cars are lined up for the acceleration squat test. A perfectly horizontal bar is attached across the rear of each car so we can see how much they squat when they take off. And look at that Buick squat when the drivers hit the gas pedals. But DeSoto holds steady, level as a tabletop by comparison. So Buick has more bounce, more lean, more squat, and more brake dip too, as the next couple of pictures will show. The cars are traveling at 40 miles an hour. When they get the flag, the drivers will brake hard, but not hard enough to lock the wheels. Now watch. And there's the difference in brake dip. The DeSoto stops flatter. And here's something to remember. If you think DeSoto looks better than Buick in all these tests, just think how much better DeSoto feels to the prospect when he's sitting inside enjoying that DeSoto torsion air ride. Now this device is a steering effort wheel. It lets us compare DeSoto full-time power steering and Buick part-time power steering by measuring the manual effort required to bring any car around a curve at a certain speed. This map of the course shows it's a more or less typical winding road. The same test drivers drove each car, taking the 11 turns at a constant 40 miles an hour. The effort wheel showed that DeSoto's full-time power steering required 36 and 3 tenths pounds of effort for the course, while Buick's part-time power steering required 51 and 8 tenths pounds of effort. That means about 29% more work for the Buick driver. Just think how much easier it is for a DeSoto driver on a long trip, or if he spends several hours in his car each working day. And the system works the same at 40 miles an hour as it does at 10 or 20 or 80. It never stops working as long as the car is running. Well, that's the story from the Proving Grounds. Now, what about styling? Does Buick have a new modern look like the DeSoto? Or does it have the same old boxy look? True, those rear window dividers look a little different. But if you'll remember, a lot of 1947 cars had that feature. Now, for modern good looks, how about the big one-piece fire dome rear window? It's bigger than centuries by 386 square inches. Imagine what a difference that makes to the driver who wants a wide, unobstructed view to the rear. Does Century want to challenge us on rear-end styling? Buick seems boxy and square. DeSoto's flight-swept lines are trim and flowing. Now here's a DeSoto styling feature that's really functional, too. Recessed door handles that are flush with the side of the car and open with a flick of a finger. Buicks are the push-the-button-pull-the-handle type that DeSoto used to have. A century has increased windshield area by 25% over last year. But the fact remains that DeSoto's big new windshield has 1,436 square inches of glass compared to Century's 1,356. And for an added service and quality touch, 
our windshield wipers are 16 inches long, three inches longer than centuries. That's the kind of engineering quality you find throughout the DeSoto. That extra three inches of blade gives the DeSoto owner about 110 more square inches of clear vision in bad weather. Inside, the fire dome has more room, both front and rear. Fire dome has three and four inch advantages in shoulder room and two and a quarter inches more front leg room. Other dimensions are within a half inch of each other except rear leg room where Buick has a two inch advantage. DeSoto's luggage compartment has an opening width of 51 inches compared to Buick's 47. Inside, we have over six feet of usable width or about two and a half feet more than Buick. All right, Century challenged other makes to match it. DeSoto took them up. And certified road tests prove it's Fire Dome that gives people more of what they want in a new car. In zero to 60 miles an hour acceleration, in passing tests, in engine braking, in hill climbing, in easy level riding, in quick level stops and starts, and effortless steering in and out of traffic. That's where DeSoto shines and leads Buick. And you know, you get the same results when you match a DeSoto Fireflight with a Buick Super or Roadmaster. Or our great new sales leader, the Fire Sweep, with a Buick Special. Side-by-side -side comparisons show that model for model, DeSoto offers more owner benefits than Buick. Here on the test track is where we've proved DeSoto's superiority for you. But out on a carefully planned demonstration route is where you can prove it to your prospect. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos.